And now how this showdown is seen from inside China. The escalating punches and counterpunches are stoking anger and fears there of a trade war that could hit both countries. From Beijing, special correspondent Katrina Yu reports. On the outskirts of Beijing, dinner is served for some of farmer Yang Fili's 800 pigs. China's growing middle class has meant a bigger appetite for meat. But his pigs wouldn't grow or survive without soybean meal, much of which is imported from the U.S. Soybean meal is a feed which provides nutritional balance and protein. And now Farmer Yang could be paying a lot more to feed them, after China announced it would be slapping imports of U.S. soybeans with a 25 percent tariff. The levy will also be added to more than 100 other American goods, including cars and planes. China has never given in to external pressure. External pressure will only make Chinese people even more determined. China is firing back in response to a list of items released by the Trump administration yesterday. President Trump says it's about leveling the playing field. China is going to end up treating us fairly. For many years, they had free reign. They don't have free reign anymore. The political pressure will be high on President Trump and his base of support in many soybean growing states. And farmers will be hit hard, says Paul Burke, the North Asia Regional Director for the U.S. Soybean Export Council. It will have a negative uh, impact on the prices that U.S. soybean farmers will receive. And soybean farmers are already uh, just barely getting by on the, on, on, the, on the margins that they're receiving. And anything that would depress that price would have a serious detrimental impact to those farmers. Putting levies on U.S. soybeans, which are also used to make cooking oil, is a high-stakes move for China as it risks food inflation domestically. Many had believed it would be too sensitive for Beijing to touch, but they were wrong, says economist Jeremy Stevens. Yeah, this idea that you can sort of pressure China into different positions, that's proven to not be true. Um, you know, and, and China isn't afraid to do things that markets struggle to, as I say, metabolize. But China is quick to remind the U.S. that it threw the first punches. Starting with 30 percent duties on solar panels and washing machines, then the 25 percent tariffs on imported steel and 10 percent on aluminium just weeks ago. The move forced Huayang Steel Mill in China's northern Hebei province to shift its strategy of focusing on the American market this year. The part of our industry which exports to America is facing a big loss. Orders have decreased by at least half. The measures were Washington's first strike in a battle to address a global trade imbalance. But while exemptions have since been given to U.S. allies, including Canada, Australia and the European Union, the White House is making sure China continues to feel the pinch. America's trade deficit with China, comprised mostly of computers and other electronics, soared to $375 billion last year, according to U.S. figures, up 8 percent from 2016. But Chinese analysts like Bian Yongzhu of Renmin University say this isn't what these tariffs are really about. Where there's a political dispute resulting in higher tariffs, the purpose isn't to solve a trade imbalance or trade dispute between China and the U.S. It's more a release of anger. Justified anger, according to some. The U.S. has long accused Beijing of unfair trade practices, including relying on state subsidies and stealing intellectual property. American companies operating in China say they're forced to spill tech secrets in order to set up shop. This is the most important economic relationship in the world. It's important for both countries, and yet it's lopsided. And we need to do something to, to get a level playing field, and talking for 20 years has not done it. So I guess the administration's saying, let's try something else. That something else has sparked panic from businesses on both sides of the Pacific. A group of retailers, including Walmart and Macy's, sent a letter to the Trump administration late last month, urging a rethink on extra levies on household items, such as bedding, clothing and electronics routinely imported from China. While the new tariffs avoid these goods for now, costs will increase for American manufacturers who depend on Chinese machinery and imported parts.
Washington's plan targets robotics, new energy vehicles and telecommunications. It's a tense time for tech companies in Beijing. This is Beijing's Zhongguan Sun, an area known as China's Silicon Valley. Many of the companies based here are worried their exports to the U.S. will be affected by these new tariffs. PBS NewsHour approached dozens of these firms for comment, but all of them declined, scared to speak out due to the sensitivity of the climate. Francis B helps Chinese tech startups crack the U.S. market and says American consumers will pay the price for Chinese goods being shut out. It just means less, um, less options at a more cost-effective price. Um, at the end of the day, really, it's going to be the consumers that sort of lose out um, because they might not be able to get the latest and best technology. Beijing already slapped $3 billion worth of tariffs on more than 100 American products this week, including fruit and wine. We have wines for 45 quai, which is really a very good deal. It's bad news for Beijing-based wine importer Claudia Masuga, who's waiting on an order for 14,000 bottles of Californian red, and will soon find out whether she'll have to foot higher taxes for them. We do have to see the next container of American wine will arrive on the 6th of April. We will discover it. Of course, we are not happy to pay more tax. Who would be? And at the end of the day, it's also not good for the consumers because they then have to pay even more. It's not just consumers paying the price for this brewing trade war. As farmers and industry groups deal with the fallout from today's announcement, others are bracing themselves for more possible tit-for-tat measures. But from China, Analysts say the message is clear. The United States is trying to play bad cop to a, to a sort of society that doesn't want to be policed in that way by the United States. And so far, the escalation is showing no sign of letting up. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Katrina Yu in Beijing.